Sup guys, Ross Edgley here. Um, I get lots of questions on the Gymshark social media channels asking about my specific workouts and, and routines. Um, the honest answer is I don't actually strictly adhere to any specific routine. It, it's more of a philosophy more than anything. Because I want to break down basically the principles and theory behind this workout program that is almost like a strength and power hybrid. I think most workouts actually look in terms of physiology and they'll break down body parts in terms of training arms or chest or legs. Whereas what I much prefer to do is actually look at it in terms of biomechanics and for each workout we've got four different principles to focus on in each set and each exercise the very first principle is basically based on newton's laws of physics where force equals mass times acceleration sounds complicated it's not all it means is that to generate more force you have two options you can either add more mass to add more weight to the barbell um, or you can actually move the weight quicker and that's exactly what we're doing on the very first uh, set and exercise here acceleration this is the part of the equation that we are manipulating to generate more force we're just make moving the weight a lot quicker it's also related to something called neural priming where basically you're trying to get the joints and muscles excited and working more cohesively before you go on to the second heavier set which takes on nicely to the second principle. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, where we are manipulating the mass part of the equation. Basically, we are just putting on more weight. Next onto the third, uh, we're looking at unilateral movements. All this means is single limb movement patterns. Things like lunges, only reason being in sport, quite often most things are unilateral. So this is getting us moving in functional movement patterns like we do in real life or in sport. And then finally, the fourth is looking at work capacity. Your body's ability to perform and positively tolerate training of a given intensity and duration. So at this point, we start to add things, finishes such as bear crawls, sled drags, and things that will serve to complement the entire strength and power hybrid workout. Let's go get involved. This is what it should look like. First up, plyometric push-ups. Um, on this particular exercise, again, it's worth remembering that force equals mass times acceleration, and it's acceleration that we're trying to actually manipulate in that equation. So on this, looking at three sets to five reps, but the most important thing is just drilling those fast movement patterns and not actually fatiguing. Plyometric push-ups done. Um, like I said, maybe three sets, five reps, but the most important thing is that you do not fatigue. Again, it's that speed of movement throughout, prepping the body for what's about to come now on the second exercise. Next up, the bench press. Um, I think now it's really important to start looking at the mass part of that equation. So force equals mass times acceleration, and it's at this point we can really start to put on some weight now. The reason I put this second in the workout is because the body has been primed, that idea of neural priming. So now the joints, the muscles, everything is working cohesively, and we're actually prepped, ready to now start shifting some extra weight. So it's really, really important that you're giving yourself enough rest between sets. Maybe 90 seconds, it might be more. Working around three sets, five reps. Next up, looking at unilateral movements. Um, I think the reason I like to include these after you've mastered Luton's laws is just because with single limb movements, it's so often used in sport. These are functional movement patterns. And also to do it during your workout, it basically highlights any imbalances or, or misalignments that you might have. At this point, we're halfway through the workout and already for the first two exercises, we've looked at uh, acceleration and speed of movement. And then we've looked at mass and, and strength of movement. But I think on the unilateral movements, this third component, what's really important to look at is, is just quality of movement, making sure that you're controlling the weights, your joints and everything, and everything's working cohesively and in harmony. So in reality, you're looking at maybe three sets, 10 repetitions, but again, it's just quality of movement. The fourth component of the workout is dealing with work capacity. So your body's ability to perform and positively tolerate training of a given intensity and duration. Um, so with all workouts, I like to finish them um, with what I call finishes, which could be uh, bear crawls with sled drags. As a general rule of thumb, certainly with bear crawls, one thing that's quite good is, is looking at 20 meters on the minute, every minute for 10 minutes. Having said that, get creative with it. You might want to reverse the bear crawl as well, drill different movement patterns. You might want to extend it rather than 20 meters. Get creative with it and start to manipulate your own workout. That concludes my strength and power hybrid workout. Um, but like I said at the very start, I don't specifically adhere to a workout routine as such. It's more a philosophy. Um, for those who have read my book, uh, they'll know I'm a huge fan of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Um, he says, if you teach a man principles, he can create his own methods. So hopefully that's exactly what I've done there. 
there, um, I've taught you guys principles so you can actually apply your own method. So as a kind of summary to everything that you've seen today, and um, what I'd encourage you to do is, is get creative with your own workouts. Although we talk about bear crawls, sled drags, unilateral movements, you know, really get creative and, and find what works for your own biology. Like I said, in summary, teach a man principles, he can create his own methods.